As I'm making this video, the big news for the iPhone is iOS 19, which is rumored to be the biggest update to iOS in years. But while we wait for that, it is worth going back and checking out some tips and tricks for the iPhone that I reckon most people don't know. So that's what we're gonna be covering in this video, 10 tips and tricks for the iPhone that I bet most people have no idea about. Okay, let's get into it. You can easily create a GIF from either a video or a live photo on your iPhone. Aside from being a bit of fun, GIFs are also much smaller in size than regular video files, which makes them ideal for sharing over things like messages. To do this, you'll need to use the Shortcuts app. Start by opening Spotlight Search, type in Shortcuts, and open the app. Once you're in, tap on Gallery in the bottom right corner, and then use the search bar to search for GIF. The top result should be a shortcut called Make GIF. Tap the little plus icon to add it to your shortcuts. Once that's added, press Cancel to exit the search, then go to the My Shortcuts tab in the bottom left. You'll see the Make GIF shortcut has now been added. Tap it to run it. Your phone will now filter your photo library to show only videos and live photos. If you're specifically looking for a live photo, tap the Collections button at the top, scroll down to the Media Type section and choose Live Photos. Then just pick the one that you want to turn into a GIF. If you select a video, you'll be taken to an editing screen where you can trim it down using the arrows at the top. Remember, GIFs are meant to be short, so it is a good idea to trim out anything unnecessary. Once you're happy with your selection, press Save and your GIF will be created. Tap Done and it will be saved right to your photo library, ready to share however you like. If you use Apple Music, you're probably already familiar with the ability to favorite a song. When a song is playing, just tap the star icon and that track gets added to your favorites. Then if you go to your main library view, tap on playlists, you'll see a favorites playlist that automatically collects everything that you've starred. But what you might not know is that you can also favorite an entire album. When you're viewing an album, tap the menu at the top and choose favorite. The confusing part is that these albums don't get added to the favorites playlist, only individual songs. So how do you find them again? Here's what you do. From the main Apple Music library view, go to albums, then tap the filter button. It's just to the left of the menu icon in the top right. By default, you'll be looking at all albums, but here you can change the view to show only your favorited albums. The same method works for playlists as well. So if you've favorited a playlist, you'll be able to filter and find it the exact same way. It's a really useful little trick if you're building out a curated library of go-to albums and playlists. Hey, quick question. Do you ever feel like you're only scratching the surface of what your iPhone can do? Do you find it hard to remember all of the tips and tricks that people show you or that you watch in YouTube videos like this? If yes, you should definitely check out my training portal, iPhone Essentials Plus. It's more than 100 tips for the iPhone, with another 100 being added very soon, covering every aspect of your iPhone. Each module contains lessons, and each lesson contains a tutorial video, a step-by-step -step guide with screenshots, and a downloadable PDF. So no matter how you like to learn, you're covered. You can work through each lesson in order, or you can pick and choose what you want to learn at any given time. There's no ads, no sponsors, just content, and you can access it on your iPhone or your tablet or home computer. Plus, no monthly subscription. This is a one-time only payment with lifelong access to all of the content, including all future updates. If this sounds good to you, scan the QR code on screen or click the link in the description of this video. I'm usually pretty good at managing my tabs in Safari. I tend to close them all down at the end of each session, but I know a lot of people don't work that way and end up with hundreds of tabs open at once. If you ever want to do a big clear out of your Safari tabs, the standard method is to tap the tabs button in the bottom right corner, then long press on the done button. You'll see an option to close all tabs and that will wipe the slate clean. But what if you wanna keep a few of those tabs and only delete the rest? Safari doesn't give you a native option to select which tabs to close and which to keep, but there is a simple workaround. While in the tabs view, press the button in the bottom center of the screen and choose new empty tab group. Give it a name, something like to keep works well, then press save. Now you'll see your new tab group listed at the bottom of the screen and just to the left will be your original group of tabs. Tap into the original group, find the first tab that you want to save, long press on it and begin dragging it. With your finger still held down, use another finger to tap on any other tabs that you also want to keep. This creates a stack of selected tabs. With the original finger still pressed, tap into your new tab group, then let go of the stack. Those tabs will now be moved into your to keep group. You can now safely return to the original group. Long press on the done button and tap close all tabs. It isn't as seamless as having a built-in tab selector, but it's a solid workaround to declutter your tabs without losing the ones that matter. 
If you're enjoying the content here, why not sign up for my weekly newsletter, which is all about tech news and tips delivered free to your inbox each Friday. Sign up via the QR code on screen or the link in the description. If you're anything like me, you enjoy working with some instrumental beats playing in the background. And if that's the case, there is a feature in Apple Music that you should definitely try. Next time you're playing a song in Apple Music, look for the lyrics button. It's in the bottom left corner of the now playing screen. If it's available for that track, tap it while the song is playing. You'll then see a karaoke style microphone icon appear just above the scrub bar. Tap on that icon and use your finger to slide the vocal volume all the way down to the bottom. What this does is use Apple's AI to isolate the vocals and reduce them, essentially turning the track into a karaoke version, or in other words, an instrumental. It doesn't work with every single song, but in my experience, it works really well with most modern tracks. Definitely worth giving it a try if you like to have some background music while you work. The settings app on the iPhone can be a bit of a maze. Even though Apple has made a lot of improvements over the years, it's still really easy to get lost in all the menus, especially when you dive into areas like accessibility, where there is just so much packed in. If you've ever struggled to find a specific setting, there are a couple of ways to speed things up using search. The first method is built right into the settings app. Just open settings, swipe down slightly, and you'll see a search bar appear at the top. Type in whatever setting you're trying to find, Bluetooth, dark mode, text size, anything. And if there's a match, it'll appear right there in the results. Tap it and you'll jump straight to the correct settings page. But there's another method that's worth knowing about and that's using spotlight search. Press the search button on your home screen or just swipe down from the middle of the screen to bring it up. Then type in the setting that you're after. What's great about this is that for some features, you'll not only get a shortcut to the relevant settings page, you might actually get a toggle switch right there in spotlight. So if it's something like Wi-Fi or airplane mode, you can turn it on or off without even opening the settings app. It's a small tip, but it can save you a surprising amount of time. Let's say you've been working in the calculator app on a particularly tricky calculation. You finish it, you close the app and carry on with your day, only to realize later that you need that exact result again. But the app's been closed and you assume it's gone. The good news is it isn't. Just reopen the calculator app and press the history button in the top left corner. The calculator keeps a log of your previous calculations for quite a while, so you can scroll through and find the exact one that you're looking for. If you long press on any of the entries in this list, you'll get the option to either copy the result or copy the full expression. Whichever one you choose gets copied to your clipboard, ready to be pasted wherever you need it. You can also delete individual entries from this page if you wanna clear them out. You might already be familiar with focus modes. They let you customize the way that your phone behaves depending on what you're doing. Most people set up a work focus mode, for example, and configure it so that their home screen looks completely different to their personal one. I've covered how to set up focus modes elsewhere on the channel, so I won't go through that again here. But something that surprises a lot of people when I show them is that you can also customize the buttons that appear on your lock screen, and you can do it on a per focus mode basis. So for example, if I lock my phone while I'm in my personal focus mode, you'll see that the two buttons at the bottom are the torch or flashlight, depending on where you are in the world, and the camera. But if I switch over to my work focus mode and lock the screen again, you'll see that I have completely different lock screen buttons. So here's how to set this up. Go into the focus mode that you want to customize, then tap and hold on your lock screen to enter the customization view. Tap customize at the bottom, then tap lock screen again. You'll see your current lock screen buttons. Tap the minus button to remove either one, then tap the plus button to add a new one. You'll get access to your full list of control center options. Just choose whichever makes the most sense for your focus mode. When you're happy with the setup, press done in the top right. You can repeat this process for each focus mode that you've got set up, giving you lock screen controls that are tailored to exactly what you're doing. We all want the most relevant apps available on our home screen at all times, but with limited space, it can be hard to decide which ones deserve a spot. One thing you might wanna try is letting your iPhone decide for you. To do this, long press on your home screen to enter edit mode, then tap the edit button in the top left corner. Choose add widget, scroll down until you find Siri suggestions, then tap on it and add the first widget that appears. It'll be a simple four by two grid of apps. Once it's added, you can long press on the widget and drag it wherever you want it to live. When you tap done, your phone will begin intelligently filling that widget with the eight apps it thinks are most relevant to you based on how you use your phone. This can change depending on the time of day, your location or your habits. And if you like how it works, you can even add a second Siri suggestions widget right next to the first one. 
your iPhone won't duplicate apps between the two, meaning that you could have 16 dynamically selected apps on your home screen all curated for you. It isn't a perfect system, but for a lot of people, it's a much easier way to manage your app layout than doing everything manually. Definitely worth giving it a try. If you're anything like me, you probably use Spotlight Search all the time to find and open apps. Just a quick reminder, you can do this by either tapping the search button on your home screen or swiping down slightly on the home screen to bring up Spotlight. Then just type in the name of the app that you want to open. But here's something you might not know. If you find yourself searching for the same app again and again, you don't need to keep doing that. You can actually long press on the app icon right from within Spotlight, drag it out of the search results and drop it directly onto your home screen. It's a really handy way to turn frequently searched apps into one tap shortcuts without having to go hunting for them in the app library. You probably already know about reachability. It's the feature that helps you access the top part of your iPhone screen using just one hand. To enable it, go to settings, then accessibility, tap on touch and make sure reachability is turned on. Once that's set up, you can activate it at any time with a quick downward flick at the bottom edge of the screen. It can take a bit of practice to get the gesture right, but once you've nailed it, it becomes second nature. When you do it correctly, the whole screen shifts down, making it much easier to tap things at the top, like buttons or menus. But here's the part that I think a lot of people don't know. Once the screen is shifted down, if you swipe down from the top right corner of that lowered screen, you can access Control Center, just like you would if you were swiping down from the full top right corner of the screen. And that's a big deal because Control Center is one of the trickiest things to reach one-handed. This shortcut makes it super simple. Definitely worth trying if you're not already using it. So there you go, 10 tips and tricks for the iPhone. How many of them did you know? Or are there any that you reckon I should have included? Drop me a comment and let me know. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.